been a strange time for us in the church to, to not only not be meeting together, but we as a church, Nall Avenue Church of the Nazarene, we've been selling, celebrating communion together every Sunday for about the last three years now, and it's been wonderful. I've enjoyed it. I didn't grow up with communion being a, a big part of, of my church experience, and even when I experienced communion one, about once a quarter, it was scary for me. The way that it was taught was that we don't receive this meal unworthily, and so I've got to make sure I have every sin confessed, and I've got to make sure that there's nothing between me and God, and I, I viewed communion as kind of a barrier between me and God. I've been able to understand it uh, better over the years, and I experience it now as, as the church has intended for it to be, as, as our Wesleyan tradition intends for it to be, as, as a means of grace. Not a barrier between me and God, but a, a way that I can actually experience the living presence of God giving me the gift of, of, of His presence and, and being able to then experience the strength, the, the encouragement, the, the grace that I need uh, to, to be able to live the, the life that God's called me to live during the week. So I, I love communion now. But there's a, there's a lot to it. This, this, this whole theology of the sacraments is complex, and I'm, I'm teaching a class at Mid-America right now on the sacraments, and I've taught several classes in other places on the sacraments and worship, and I realize that trying to explain what is happening in, in these elements on Sunday morning, either with communion or, or with baptism, it's complex. It's, it's, there's a long history of the theology of these elements. <laughs> Our tradition is kind of confused, or, or at least historically, we've not embraced um, all elements of what the meal means. And, and we've adopted, almost by accident, a, a theology of the communion that Ulrich Zwingli, uh, who was a, a, a pastor a long time ago uh, in the, the 1500s, uh, he, he embraced a view called the memorialist view, where the communion elements uh, were something that we received to remind us of something that Jesus did a long time ago. But he didn't believe that Jesus was actually present in the elements. John Wesley embraced a, a more dynamic view of that, which was really very similar to that of, of John Calvin and Martin Luther and the Reformers, and even before that, uh, back all the way to the beginning of the church. A more dynamic view that embraced what we understand to be the real presence of Christ. That real presence of Christ came to us in particular through a prayer that was offered all the way back to the beginning of the church and, and has, for the most part, come all the way through the history of the church even into our modern day. And this prayer is called an, a prayer of apoclesis, which is essentially just a, a call of an invocation for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We pray it every Sunday here. The, the prayer goes a little bit something like this. Father, will you send your Holy Spirit down upon these elements to make them for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ? And through these elements, will you bind us together as one body and send us forth as a unified church for your glory? There's a lot of different strands to the prayer, and you can hear different strains of it in, in different liturgies, but that's kind of the essence of what we pray. I hope that that we can embrace this fuller sense of communion, especially when we gather back together, and that we can truly understand that somehow, mysteriously, in ways that we don't understand, Jesus comes and is really among us in his real presence through the gift of the Holy Spirit for the glory of the Father in these elements. I, I like what, what uh, Brent Peterson says in, in his book, In Worship, he says, we shouldn't get caught up in the science of the sacraments and explaining exactly how Christ is present. We should simply glory in the fact that he's there. And that's what I hope we're able to do in the days to come as we gather back together from the four winds and, and arrive in the presence of God in his house for us to be able to worship him together and to know for sure at the end of the service when we gather around the table, Jesus is there through the Spirit, for the glory of the Father and the edification of the church.